everyone. Thank you for joining me through the Blackthorn Arch, a podcast all about folk tales, fairy stories, and ghostly encounters in the UK. My name is Hearth, spelt H-E-A-R-T-H, and today we are going to be talking about a very interesting folk custom from Wales. We're talking about the Mary Lewid. Now, the Mary Lewid is a traditional custom that I have been looking at for so many years. Since I lived in Wales, I've always been fascinated with it. And so today I figured it was the ideal time to have a podcast episode all about it. Now, the Mary Lewid is a South Wales folk custom that usually happens between Christmas Day and Twelfth Night. It's a fascinating tradition that usually involves a group of people, including a horse skull mounted on a wooden pole that travels from house to house, bringing good fortune for the year to come. But what is the Mary Lewid? Where does it come from? And what kind of things occur during the nights when the Mary Lewid is roaming the streets? Now, this entire tradition revolves around Mary Lewid, which is the horse figure that's represented during this folk tradition. The Mary Lewid is primarily composed of a mare's skull. This skull is then decorated with a mane of colourful ribbons. Sometimes these are also made of holly and ivy. The eyes are filled out with baubles, Christmas lights, the ends of glass bottles, or sometimes eyes have been specifically created to fit the Mary Lewid skull. Now this skull is then mounted onto a wooden pole, and from the bottom of the skull is draped a white cloth. This white cloth then goes to disguise the man that's standing underneath it, holding the wooden pole. This individual then controls the Mary Lewid's movements as it travels around the town or village, often snapping open and closed the jaw. The term Mary Lewid comes from the Welsh Ivari Lewid, but the term Mary Lewid may have two different origins. The first is that of Grey Mare. It's often believed that the Mary Lewid is associated with the pale horses of Welsh mythology found relatively frequently within the Mabinogi, which is a book of Welsh mythology. It's often seen that the pale horse is associated with the Celtic Otherworld, and it's written within the Mabinogi that Rhiannon rides the pale horse to and from the Celtic Otherworld. In other areas, we do see pale horses repeating again, with the horse goddess Epona, along with the pale horse that's carved into the chalk hills of the Downs. Pale horses are very important within Celtic regions and Celtic mythology, and so it's believed that the Mary Lewid may have some association with these. The second potential origin for the name Mary Lewid comes from Grey Mary. Now this in itself has two potential different origins, the first being that of Mary the figure that we see within the Bible. And so some believe that the Mary Lewid is directly associated with Mary. However, others believe it may have more to do with the believed nativity scene that we see within the Bible, with some saying that Mary, heavily pregnant, needed to find somewhere safe to give birth. When no inn had space to take her, she found herself within a stable. However, to make space within the stable, some say that a pregnant horse had to be removed in order to make room for Mary to be there. And so the Mary Lewid is believed to be this horse figure, pregnant with foal, attempting to find a safe place to rest, travelling from house to house, attempting to gain entry in order to have safety and security. And you'll see how this ties into the story as we go forwards. Ultimately, however, no one knows whether the Mary Lewid is of Christian origin or pre-Christian origin. There are no written documents that survive from before the late 1700s, and so we're ultimately left not entirely sure where it came from, with some believing it has purely Christian origins and others saying that there are too many aspects of pre-Christian belief for it to be entirely of Christian origin. Either way, it's a tradition that has lasted for a very long time in South Wales, and although in the mid-20th century it did die a little bit, we're starting to see a resurgence of it again, with more people learning about this tradition, with school children being taught about it, and with the tradition still continuing within local towns and villages. If you were to travel to South Wales, you aren't just going to see the Mary Lewid roaming around at any time of year. No, no. The Mary Lewid specifically occurs between Christmas Day and Twelfth Night, and it usually always occurs after nightfall. The Mary Lewid doesn't travel alone. Instead, she travels with a group of individuals. Originally, these would have all been men, but today we see a mixture of different people taking part in these celebrations. The Mary Lewid is the main figure. She is the horse figure that is found within all of these celebrations. 
You then also have an ostler. The ostler is usually a finely dressed individual who guides the horse. They are essentially the horse keeper. And then alongside the ostler, you also have singers. And in some cases, you also have a Punch and Judy pair, which are almost the jesters of the show that travel around with the group. As night falls and lanterns and candles are lit, the Mary Lewid and her procession go out around the village or town. They go to different houses, different pubs and bars, and as they do so, a ritual takes place that's known as punker. Now, I do apologise if I'm not getting the Welsh pronunciation quite right. I have been trying so hard to learn Welsh for a few years, and I am still struggling with the pronunciation, so I do really apologise. But this tradition is essentially a singing battle. As the Mary Lewid approaches a property, the singers will begin to sing traditional Welsh songs. These songs are a request to gain entry into the property. The people inside the building will hear these songs and they go round and lock every door and every window, attempting to stop the Mary Lewid and her party from entering. As the singing continues, the Mary Lewid attempts to gain entry, giving reasons for why they should be allowed inside. The people inside the property then have to sing back, give reasons and excuses for why the Mary Lewid and her party cannot enter. And this singing battle goes back and forth, sometimes for hours on end, until ultimately the people inside the property have run out of excuses. There's no more reason why they cannot allow the Mary Lewid inside. And so the doors are opened and the Mary Lewid and her party are allowed inside. Once inside, the party eats and drinks, and generally has a very good time. Sometimes mischief is to be had, with the Mary Lewid snapping its jaws at women or children, often pursuing women through the property. In some cases, the Punch and Judy type figures will put on a show. The Judy figure, often carrying a broomstick, will put out the family's fire and then proceed to sweep the property, seemingly for no reason. But we'll talk about this a little bit more later. Once festivities have been had, the Mary Lewid and her party will leave the property. And it's said that in her wake is left behind good fortune and blessings for the year to come. She will then travel to another property, to a restaurant or another location, where this ritual then continues throughout the night, with the Mary Lewid party slowly becoming more and more drunk and unruly as the night goes on. The first written record of the Mary Lewid came from a book that was written in the late 1700s by a gentleman called J. Evans. His book was a tour through part of North Wales, but it's likely that the tradition is much older than this. And actually, although it might have been documented in this book specifically about North Wales, this tradition is primarily found within the very south portions of Wales. Though we don't entirely know how or why this tradition began, it has been speculated that it's found within areas of coal mining, and oftentimes on historic records where Mary Lewid celebrations were taking place, they're often in towns, villages, and counties where there's a large amount of coal mining. And so it's believed it may have been a coal mining tradition that occurred within the mining communities that was then spread and shared with the communities that they traded with. And so you get a gradual spread of this tradition through trade and interaction in all of the areas where coal mining and mineral mining took place in South South Wales. The tradition was documented many times since the early 1800s, though we noticed documentation did start to disappear in the 1960s. Maybe this was a changing belief system, maybe this was people pushing away their traditional customs. Whatever it might be, the pushing away of the Mary Lewid celebration didn't last for long, as for the past few decades, the Mary Lewid has been going strong again. And it's being taught to children as well as communities so that those who live in South Wales can share and know a little bit more about their heritage. Though traditionally a real horse head was used, primarily a mare, not everyone is comfortable using a real horse head and not everyone has access to them. Although traditionally, in different villages and towns, the same mare's head would be used time and time again, usually being stored within a bar for the rest of the year until it was needed again, nowadays people don't have ready access to horse heads. And so a lot of the time, you will see them being made of wood, paper mache, cardboard, whatever people have access to in order to create this representation of the mare's head. 
This makes it far more accessible for children to learn about the Mary Lured, as well as for locals to be able to have access to the celebrations, even if they can't have access to a traditional mayor's head. And although historically people may have actually wanted to push away the Mary Lured from entering their home, perhaps from the mischief and chaos that might ensue if they were allowed inside, Today it's seen as a very positive thing for the Maui Lured to want to gain entry into your property, and more often, pubs and bars. Although the tradition is upheld of the singing battle occurring outside, essentially attempting to stop the Mary Lewid and her party from entering, ultimately the pub owners really would like the Mary Lewid to come inside, and always they are allowed in. Even the appearance of the Mary Lewid, even the witnessing of her as she travels around with her party is said to bring good luck and good fortune into the year ahead. And so the tradition of the Mary Lewid lives on, even today. Though there are many opinions, no one is entirely sure what the original purpose of the Mary Lewid celebration was. There simply isn't enough found or surviving documentation that will really tell us exactly what it was for. But of course there are theories. The first being that the Mary Lewid is associated with the Celtic Otherworld. The time of the year is really significant, with the dark half of the year bringing us closer to the Otherworld, the association of pale horses with travelling to and from the Celtic Otherworld, and the association with figures within the Mabinogi all make us question whether or not it has something to do with the Celtic Otherworld, the transition between life and death, or things coming and going between the two. Because of the actions of the Mary Lewid and some of the historic documentation that we have, some also believe that it's associated with fertility. Now, mares' heads are commonly used within witchcraft to represent fertility either for the people within the house or within farm animals. And so that ties very closely in with the idea that this figure may well have been a fertility symbol and this may well have been a fertility festival. The ribbons that were attached to the Mary Lewid head to represent the mane were often given either by women of the parish or they were given by the women who were wives of the gentlemen who were going to be singing within the Mary Lewid celebration. And so that leads again to think, maybe they were adding a little bit of themselves into this ritual for something specific. When the Mary Lewid enters homes, she will often chase around women in the house, maybe associating this even further with bringing female fertility. Though of course, no one can really know for sure. What we know today is that the Mary Lewid is associated with good fortune, and that by entering into someone's property, she will be bringing in good fortune for the year to come. This is where the Judy figure from Punch and Judy really plays in here. Usually the Judy figure comes into the property carrying a broomstick, where she immediately puts out the family fire, and then she sweeps around the house, essentially cleaning it. For any of you who know about witchcraft today, you will know that broomsticks, also known as besoms, are used to sweep the floors. They are used to not only physically clean, but also to ceremonially clear out any bad spirits, any negative energies, or any harmful entities from that space. So it does make you wonder, the combination of these two figures, one clearing out the old, stopping the fire so it can be relit anew, and the other to bring in new positive energies. Could this festival all surround the idea of cleansing and energizing a space for positivity? Ultimately though, we will never know. All we can do is hope that the bits and pieces of this traditional celebration that have survived today will continue to do so within Welsh tradition for years to come. And although to this day, not many people who live in South Wales know about the tradition unless you're fortunate enough to have lived in an area where it's quite prevalent, it has sealed itself within history, as many poets and songwriters have written about the Mary Lewid within their writings. One of the most well-known is a poem written by Vernon Watkins in 1941. The section about the Mary Lewid goes as follows. Mary Lewid, Lewid Mary, a sacred thing through the night they carry, betrayed are the living, betrayed are the dead, all are confused by a horse's head. And I think that's just so beautiful, and hearing the songs that were sung during the Mary Lewid processions, it truly is a beautiful piece of Welsh tradition. And I have included several videos, as well as the resources for this video and podcast, in the description for it. And so if you would like to see the tradition firsthand, or would like to hear the Welsh songs that are sung, they will be linked in the description box. And I would thoroughly recommend looking at those resources by people who have taken a part in these celebrations themselves, who are very close to 
their Welsh heritage so that you can really learn from them because really learning from the people who celebrate it is really the best way to learn a little bit more about it. But these style of traditions don't just take place in Wales. And I didn't realise this beforehand, but horse head celebrations and folk traditions are found almost everywhere in Britain. Now the Mary Lewid is specific to Wales, and I would never want to claim that this tradition appears anywhere else, because it simply doesn't. It's a Welsh tradition that is unique to and of itself. However, the power of horse figures is seen elsewhere as well. And so in the future, I'd like to dive a little bit more into the mythology, folklore, and practice of these horse celebrations throughout the rest of the British Isles as well. With that being said, I hope that you did enjoy today's episode. This one is a little bit shorter perhaps than the others, but it's something that I really wanted to put out, particularly during this time of year. If you did enjoy it, there are other episodes already on this podcast, and as mentioned, I would thoroughly recommend learning a little bit more about the Mary Lewid celebration from those who celebrate it themselves. I've linked everything down in the description of either the video or the podcast episode, so if you would like to learn a little bit more, you have the resources in order to do that. I want to thank all of you for joining me through the Blackthorn Arch for today's episode. If you've taken part in the Mary Lewid celebrations in Wales, please let me know what your experiences were. One day I would love to be able to experience it for myself because I would love to be able to witness this. It's such a beautiful tradition and the fact that it's still going is just phenomenal and I'm so happy that these traditions haven't simply been lost over time. With that being said, I hope you have a marvellous magical day and hopefully I can get you through the Blackthorn Arch next week for another episode. Bye!